Hi there. My name is Ryan Tyndale, and I am a teacher in Southern Ontario, Canada. I teach grade five this year, and I'm in one of the big public boards just outside Toronto, just as a frame of reference of where I'm I'm posting this video from. Uh, I, like I said, I have a grade five class this year. I have 28 10 year olds, and I, I use technology quite often in my classroom. And I wanted to show you, uh, post a video of, on how to use a website called Socrative.com. Now I do have a cold, so you have to excuse my voice if I do sound a bit raspy. Um, Socrative.com is, is really what I want to show you. And if you've searched out this video, then obviously you are curious about, about it as well. If you don't find the video helpful, you know, by all means, go and check out one of the other ones. But uh, I want to show you, even starting from the Google homepage, how to go about creating one. Okay, I want to make this as user-friendly as possible. So the student login is here, and that's where your students are going to access their, is their responsibility, basically. If you want them to complete the test, this is where they go. Teacher login is you, obviously. Uh, so I am going to put in my password and user account. This is my room code, and your room code is important because it's uh, it's it's how your students access your your quiz. Basically, they'll go into their part, and you can see that they are asked to enter teacher's room code. So they are going to put in Southwood Five. When you first log in and you first create an account, you're going to get a generic uh, room code, which will probably be eight to ten characters, you know, a combination of letters and numbers. If you want to change it to a word, which is a lot easier, go ahead and change it uh, right in here under my profile. Okay. Now, this is the main dashboard here. You can do a quiz, a quick poll. A space race, which is really a lot of fun. It's kind of like a quiz, except everyone's competing together against each other at the same time. Exit ticket. I used this actually in a workshop a few weeks ago, and uh, it's a quick three question. Pulls the it pulled the teachers really on what they thought of the workshop. Quiz is where I want to go now. This is to start a quiz or to launch it. You can see these little three bars right here, equal to this. There is a quiz that is live right now and I'm going to show you how to close it and then launch it okay first I'm going to go to manage quizzes this is where I create I import this is my data bank this is my reports if I want to generate a report so to create a quiz I go in here and I would punch this in as YouTube 246 okay if you're watching from the U.S. and you want to add a common core curriculum standard, you can uh, you can add one as well, but it doesn't help me if teaching in Ontario. Three types of questions. You can do a multiple choice, true, false, or a short answer. I'll show you how to do each one. So multiple choice. I could do something like 2 plus 2 equals. Down here, I'm going to put in 2, 3, 4... I'll get rid of these guys just to give the students three options. If you want to add a D, a E, you know, you want to add a whole bunch of them, go right ahead. Now, what is super cool about this is that the Socrative.com, much like Kahoot, will mark for you. Okay, just an aside, uh, this video along with another video on Kahoot.com, which I will post to the right, a link. And I have a third one for Google Forms, which I will post to the left, a link. Uh, these three videos are for an article that I'm writing on three alternative ways of assessing students using technology. Okay, when the article is published, if and when the article is published, I will put a link to it at the top. Okay, so like Kahoot, it will mark for you, unlike, or rather Google Form will not mark for you. Okay, and you can check out those two videos as well if you're curious about them. So, I need to tell Socrative.com that four is the correct answer. You can add a picture, you can add an explanation right down in here. True, false. The cheetah is the fastest land animal. True, false, true, false, completely up to you what you label it as. Obviously, it has to be correct. Uh, in grade five in Ontario Social Studies, we teach a government unit. 
in the government unit, we talk about Canada's form of government. Uh, we use demo we're a democratic nation, so the students learn about democracy. So I could poll that I could ask them a question: What is it called when citizens can choose their own government? Okay. So down here, in a short answer, you have the option of adding in the correct answer. Now here's the problem. If a student writes democracy, but they spell it, they misspell it, they will be marked wrong. If the student puts in DEM as a, as a short form, they will be marked wrong. So you can add different possibilities of what you think they might answer. Or if there are two answers to the question, then you can put in two different answers. All right, it's up to you. Personally, I just leave this blank. Socratic doesn't mark it for me, but I can go in after and I can take a look at what they got. Okay. So that's really uh, that's really the ins and outs of it. So you've got a short answer, you've got a true false, and you have a multiple choice. I go up to the top, I save, and exit. Now. I have another one. I've got a few YouTube samples here that I've been puttering with. Oh, he's been interrupted because a student walks in or the lunch bell finishes and I have to stop my video. So I will go ahead and delete these afterward. But this is the one that I just created with you. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my dashboard, or rather, I just was at my dashboard. I'm going to start a quiz, select a quiz that I want to do. And you can see that there is a quiz right now that is live. Okay. I am going to stop that quiz by starting this one, okay? There's one already in progress. Do you want to start a new one? Yes, I do. Okay, now this quiz is live. That means the students can go into their teacher code, put in the teacher room code, put in their name, and they can complete the quiz. If you do not want, you know, let's say there's a fire drill and you don't want any cheaters, you know, outside on the yard doing the quiz on their phone, talking to a friend, or you want to close it because the period ends, you just finish it and go back to your dashboard. If you want to launch it again, you choose it, you press start, and then it goes live again. When a quiz is not live, students can't complete it. All right, that's just the issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my screen here and I'm going to show you what the students see and what you will see. Okay, uh, let me just launch this one last time okay now check this out teachers room code i'm going to go southwood five i am waiting for my teacher to start the activity okay once it presses start once the teacher presses start this will change now the quiz is live it is waiting for students to log in so i'm going to put uh rory williams i'll just put the name rory done Rory is now in my quiz. He is 0% finished. He has not even started it. But as Rory clicks this off, this bar will change here. 2 plus 2 is 4. Correct. It shows Rory that he's right. It also tells you as the teacher that he got that correct. Uh, you can be sitting at your desk, and as you're watching you know, 30 students completing a 15-question assessment, uh, it's like guided math. You can have a student get three or four wrong in a row, and you can pull them off their computer, bring them over to your desk, and you can go through the quiz together. It's, it's really amazing. Fastest land animal on Earth, the cheetah. True. Submit my answer. Now, this one is interesting because I can write democracy, and it is going to show up as almost as if it's grayed out. And the reason for that is because I didn't tell Socrative.com what the correct answer was. Okay. Now, student logs out. Student passes their computer, they pass their iPad, and uh, the next student logs in. Uh, okay, sometimes this happens. Okay, and it's only doing this because I'm on the same browser, so let me try one more time. Southwood 5. Perfect. My name is Rory. Oh, no, it's not. It's Alex. 
perfect. There's Alex there. Okay. So Alex goes in and Alex, you know, is not, doesn't know the material as well as Rory. So Alex clicks on B. Alex is told he's incorrect. It tells you Alex is incorrect. Alex thinks that a cheetah is not the fastest animal. Alex is incorrect again. Alex writes in here, democracy, and he gets it right, but he uh, obviously misspelt it, okay? Now it tells you that half the class had trouble with this question, half the class had trouble with this question. Let's toss in a third person. Teacher's room code, Southwood 5. Uh, Amy. Amy logs in. Amy gets this one correct. She gets this one incorrect. And I don't remember. Okay, so what it shows you here is that question one was one that students pretty well understood. 67% got it correct. Question two was a tougher one, so you may want to go back and, you know, revisit that material. You can see Alex has no idea uh, democracy and democracy, you know, spelt somewhat. Doesn't tell you the answer here. Shows me that all the students have completed the quiz. That's the case. I can go ahead. I can close it. Okay. Now, I can go back to my dashboard. I can generate reports or I can view the chart. Now, viewing the chart is simply what you see in the background here. So I'm going to generate a report. I can generate a whole class portion. I can do individual student marks. I can also do question specific marks. Okay. What's really cool is that I can email this to my grade partners. I can email this to my division partners like if we do a, a you know there's five grade six classes and all the grade six students write the same Socratic quiz you can do it all at the exact same time so you can have you know you can have 200 students entering the same room code and you can get it all up on one chart or you can have individual teachers do individual assess the individual assessment and then you can email the marks to each other which is really cool you can download it as well. Okay, so I'm gonna download, I'm not gonna open up the Excel document, but I will download the individual marks. Okay, which is the PDFs. And that should show up right here. Okay, so I can pull this up in Excel. Excel takes a long time to open, so I'm not gonna bother opening it. Okay, uh, question specific marks. So this is the whole quiz name, three, uh, Three students answered. You could see two out of the three got it correct. One out of the three got it incorrect. No big deal. This was a tougher one. I can see two out of three got it incorrect. One third of my class got it correct. I can see the individual marks of all the students. Okay. What I can also do is I can pull up individual student marks. So let's say I want to see Rory. This is Rory's test right here. I can go ahead and print that off. I can hand it back to Rory. He can take it home, get his parents to sign it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, the score, what's interesting, though, is that he got 100%, but he got 100% based on these two questions. It doesn't mark the short answer unless you put in the code or unless you put in the word or the, the correct answer, and the students write that correct answer exactly. Okay, so that's just something to note. So Rory could get this wrong, but still show a score of 100%. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, you know, there's there's not much more than that. Uh, Socrative is cool because I can launch a quiz at 4 o'clock. Students can go home and do it for homework, and then I can shut it down at 8 o'clock the next morning. I can leave a quiz live for the whole weekend, you know, sent live on Friday, close it down Monday morning when I get to school. I can keep a quiz live for 10 minutes. You know, it really depends on, on me and what I want to do. Okay, this is my archives, my reports. I can generate reports for all of the different quizzes of when I've done them. It's, it's really a, a great, great program. Uh, now, if you have any questions, you can email me at teachingsmarter at gmail.com. I have a website, it's teachingsmarter.wix.com. Uh, I will put the resource here if you're up for it. This is one of the workshops I teach. 
three creative ways when you click here. Once the article goes live, I will put a link there for you to check it out. Uh, I've got some diff I've got a Teachers Pay Teachers account. Everything in my account is free uh, to download. I've got about 1,200 downloads in the last year just from different workshops that I've taught, and it's all free stuff at the moment. Uh, I've done some work with Skype if you're interested in Skype. Uh, these are some magazines that I've been in and some different articles that I've done. You can click on each one of these and it'll take you right to it. Um, but really, you know, I just want you to teach smarter and use technology. Thank you for watching.